Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday Apple released macOS Sonoma 14.2 to the public. macOS 14.2 Sonoma is available around the world for everyone on all macOS Sonoma supported devices. This particular update was released alongside many other updates such as iOS 17.2, iPadOS 17.2, watchOS 10.2, and others. You'll see the overall install size was 2.68 gigabytes. This is on a Mac Studio with an M1 Ultra chipset. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about many of the new feature updates. So we'll go to the Apple in the upper left, go to About This Mac, and as you can see, this is the M1 Ultra, and you'll see Sonoma 14.2. If we click on this, you can see the current build number, which is 23C64. It allows us to know that we're on the latest version, and this is what you'll have if you install the update that's released to the public. This is the same as RC2 if you were a public beta tester or developer. If we go ahead and close this, the first thing they've updated has to do with wallpapers. If we go into our settings here, then we go down to wallpaper, scroll down a little bit further, you'll see that we have a bunch of new wallpapers for the latest iMac and also MacBook. So if we scroll over, you'll see that we have Pro Black, we also have Hello Metallic Silver, Hello Metallic Blue, Purple, Pink, Orange, as well as yellow and green. I really like this pro black color, but you can pick whatever you'd like. Let's switch back to the other wallpaper we had, which I'll link in the description. If we go into music, we have some updates there. On the left hand side, we have an all new favorite songs playlist. This is the same as iOS 17.2, where anything that you favorite in your music will show up here and just become one giant playlist of all of your favorite songs. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the collaboration playlist where we can collaborate with others. That will be delayed until 2024, according to Apple. It will probably release alongside iOS 17.3 and probably macOS 14.3. Apple hasn't said the specific version, but that seems to make the most sense. We also have a new option in music and then under settings. Within our settings, you'll see we have a new option for Use Listening History. It says music played on this Mac will appear in recently played, replay mixes, influence your recommendations, and if you set up an Apple Music profile, it will also be seen by your followers. This also applies to what you have with focus modes as well. So if you want to turn this off, you can, or just leave it checked. If we go ahead and close this, we have no more updates to iTunes. Instead, everything is now going to be within the TV app. This carries across to the new TV app, and you'll see it says Watch Now is now home. Home is where you find what to watch across your channels, and then add from previews. So if we start watching, we've got channels here on the left, recently added, and then for some reason I have a short video in here and a couple others, but you'll see if we go home, go to Apple TV, we have everything here where we no longer have things from iTunes or movies apps as well. Apple has also added Shazam built into the Mac. On the left here, if we go to our control center within our system settings, scroll down a little bit, we have music recognition. We can turn this on to show in the menu bar, and then we'll have the option to recognize music around us, whether that's through a microphone, our AirPods, or whatever's connected to the Mac. If we click here, it will start listening. We can also access this in the control panel here, where we have it as a little icon, depending on how you set it up. But we'll go ahead and turn that off, as I don't typically use that on my Mac, but you now have the option for it. If we go into the launch pad and go under the clock app, within the clock app, we now have the option under timers to set multiple timers at once. So if we start this 20 minute timer, click the plus in the upper right, go to custom timer, we can then set another one, maybe for 15 minutes, then we can select when the timer ends, what the actual alarm will be. Then we'll click start on this one, and now we have multiple timers running at once. Also, we have the option for timer presets. So again, if we click the plus button, go to presets, we have one minute all the way up to two hours. So it of increments of two, three, four, five minutes, then it goes to 10, 15, 20, 30, 45, one hour, and two hours. Click on it, and you'll start that timer. Also, you've probably already seen that we have recent here where it remembers the timers you've already used. So you can get rid of those or just start a timer simply from that. So if you use timers a lot, this should be pretty helpful. macOS 14.2 adds a few new widgets. If we go in and edit our widgets and then scroll down to weather on the left hand side, 
you'll see that we have three new widgets, one for details, we have daily forecast, and sunrise and sunset. These are also added on iOS 17.2 as well. So if you want to use any of these widgets, simply add them and you'll have more details. Also, they've updated the weather app itself. If we go into weather, once it opens up here, we have some additional details for our rain and precipitation in general. You'll see we have see hourly weather for the next 10 days, but if we go into that, it will actually show us our precipitation totals over the last 10 days or next 10 days. So if we go back here, you'll see that it rained about, well, a little less than half an inch, but you can see the overall totals as we scroll through the forecast, if we're expecting rain or if we're not, we'll see that here. Also, we have a new wind screenshot or sort of a snapshot of the wind where it gives more information with daily summary and more. And then you can see the Beaufort scale and just sort of an overall view of wind. It's mile per hour and where it's gusting and in the direction. Also under moon, if we click on that, we have a new calendar. If we scroll down that shows the different moon phases. So it's a small update, but something that they've added a little bit more detail to. If we close that out, we have some updates with PDFs. If we go into this PDF, we now have the option for it to recognize fields, and then you'll see it says autofill can assist with filling out this form. We can click autofill form, and then it recognizes the different locations. You can fill in different fields and then add your name, address, or whatever you have that you want to autofill. So you can set that up, autofill, a contact, or a password. So it's something nice that just makes it a little easier when you're working on PDFs. If we go ahead and close that out, we have some updates in messages as well. If we go into messages within messages, they've now added an arrow that allows you to catch up to where you last left off on a long conversation. Maybe you're in a group chat with a bunch of people and there's a hundred messages and you've missed a bunch of them. If you have a bunch, you'll actually have an arrow, click it and it will bring you right back to where you left off. Again, this only shows up if you have a bunch of different conversations you've missed though. There's not a set amount that we know of, but there's actually quite a few. You'll have to see probably 20 or 30 different text messages before it shows up. And it depends on how big the window is as well. Also, we have the option to add stickers, but in a different way. Instead of clicking on our options down here and adding stickers down by the text message box, we can now option click or right click and then click add sticker. We can add it directly from here, just click on it and then add your sticker and then you can move it around or make it go away as well. So again, add sticker, maybe add something else such as this Apple Watch Ultra that I made and make that sticker show up wherever you'd like. Also, they've added contact key verification. This allows us to verify who we're speaking with is who they say they are. So if it's someone that you've met in person, you can exchange a key and you can enable this in your system settings. So if we close out messages, once we go into our system settings, click on our name at the top. Once you're in your Apple ID settings, scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see contact key verification. Click on that and you can enable this. And it says verify who you are messaging with by comparing contact verification codes in person or over the phone. In conversations with people who also have contact key verification turned on, you will see a message if contact key verification detects an issue or is turned off. We can enable this and you will have to have all of your devices updated to the most recent versions, either iOS 17.2, watchOS 10.2, iPadOS 17.2, and macOS 14.2. So you have the option to enable that if you'd like to. I need to verify and update a lot of my devices though. So I'll click continue. It'll take just a moment here and it will show up that I don't have a bunch of devices updated. So I'll cancel it for now. Now also they've updated keyboards in this update. So if we go down in our menu here in system settings, go to keyboard on the left, then if we go to input sources and click edit, then we click on the plus button at the bottom left, we now have some new keyboards for Sami. So you'll see here, we have eight new options for that with Anari Sami, Kildin Sami, and more. So those are now available. They've been added with this update. Now we'll click done. And one unfortunate thing is while we do have bug fixes in this update, Apple has not said anything about what those are. If we take a look at the notes, scrolling down through the notes, there's just nothing other than features that they've actually mentioned. So hopefully they'll add that in the future where they'll give us more information as to what they've actually updated with bug fixes. There's quite a few things they could have probably updated us on, but we just don't know what they are. 
However, there are security updates and we do know what some of those are. If we go to Apple's security website in Safari, within Apple's security releases website, if we scroll down, you'll see macOS Sonoma 14.2 and you can see all of the things they've updated here. So accessibility, accounts, Apple events, Apple graphics controls, Apple VA, many, many more. So you'll see all of the updates here, kernel, shared filed list, WebKit, and you can see how this is actually set up as far as what they've repaired or what the issue is by reading the impact, which is the issue where under accessibility, secure text fields may be displayed via the accessibility keyboard when using a physical keyboard. To fix it, the description, this issue was addressed with improved state management. Then you have the CVE number referring to the fix and who helped them report it or gave them the tip that there was an issue. So this is something that they've updated. You can read all about it here. I'll link it in the description if you'd like to know more about all of the different updates and security with macOS 14.2. As far as performance or anything else, I have been using this on my Mac Studio. In fact, I edited a couple videos today using Final Cut Pro after installing it, and it seems to be working just fine. However, I have had Final Cut Pro crash a couple different times, but that's not unusual. It didn't really seem to be affected by the version that was happening on the previous update as well. Everything else is running smoothly, screen recording this with screen flow is working well, and everything just seems to be as you would expect. So pretty good so far, but we won't know for a few days. As far as battery life, if you have a MacBook, Again, it will take a few days to measure that, and we can check that on the weekend with the follow-up if I hear from a bunch of you as far as what overall battery life is like. So if you'd be interested in that, let me know in the comments below. So that's everything with macOS 14.2. If you found anything else significant as far as features and updates I didn't cover in this video, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.